Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So we've dealt with the resting membrane potential. Okay, now we are going into action. Action. So now what is action potential? Now, this, when the cell is at rest, specifically the nerve cell, excitable tissues, nerve or muscle, they are at rest. They are not doing any work. The purpose, you know, it's a biological wire, that membrane there, the nerve. It's for conduction, it's main purpose. Okay? It's for communication, electrical impulses to propagate it, transmit it. It's like a wire. So when there's a stimulus, that's why what, what is there for? There's a stimulus means there's a change in the environment. To detect it, it generates electricity and transmits it to the control center that's homeostasis don't forget about it we started with that in the introduction so action potential actually it's when there is propagation of the electrical impulse there's a potential that gets to a point whereby it's now able to move and to be transmitted along the axon but ordinarily Resting membrane is just static, just staying there. There is a potential difference. Charges are separated, creating that potential difference. That means there is a potential for it to do something, but then it's not doing anything. It's not moving. So it's being able to move. It is action. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be learning the basis which transforms the potential from being at the resting state to being at the active state which is known as the action potential all right let's start with the stages then we're not talk about the ionic basis the mechanism okay of those stages so the action potential has the following stages Okay, there are the three major stages of the action potential. What do we mean by depolarization? Depolarization means, okay, first of all, what is polarization? Because everything here, they all contain polarization. So what is changing is D, re, hyper. Okay? For something to be polarized means difference. Okay? difference potential difference no but we started by saying that there's a potential difference between the two sides what the amount of charge that is inside at the just at the edge of the cell membrane okay at the edge and the amount of charge that is outside so the difference between them so the difference between them is called polarization. It's polarized as it relates to the charge, the charges, okay? The inside being negative relative to the outside, all right? So that's polarization. So depolarization means it is reducing the polarization. Those are like in English language, I say these people are polarized along ethnic lines it means that they're having differences they're having quarrel difference so po polarization means difference they are quarreling they are disagreeing okay so there is polarized there's a difference so depolarization is just english word it means 
a reduction in the difference between what is inside and what is outside the charge that's inside that's that negativity now is reducing now look at look at this thing this is a resting membrane potential voltage seven minus 70 which says this is resting millivolts okay so it's becoming less when it's becoming less negative you see it when it gets to zero it means that there's no difference at all they are equal the charges at the two sides they are equal that means it's at zero so as it's reducing that means it is becoming less polarized it is getting closer it's, do you understand that concept? That is depolarization. Don't ever. It should not confuse you. Depolarization, okay, is making the resting membrane potential less negative. All right. So repolarization, it comes after depolarization. Depolarization has now made it to a point where there is no difference. So repolarization is going back. To his vomit, let's put it like <laughs> going back, like going back to his vomit. So he's going back to that difference. Okay. So this part of the actual one, this is a curve showing you the behavior of these different stages. Right? So repolarization is coming back to this resting state. Then hyperpolarization means it is becoming more. So it's basically what is happening here is the opposite of this depolarization. Depolarization is becoming less polarized. Hyper is becoming more polar polarized. Repolarization is going back to its initial point. Do you understand the three now? These are the three main stages. Some people can add other things, but these are actually the three main stages involved in action potential the behavior of nerves when they are stimulated sufficiently why do i use the word sufficiently now this is it you know when now I want to enter the ionic basis of these three things okay because generation of electricity is as a result of chemicals what is happening with chemicals you no know? chemical energy is being converted to electrical energy so we're going to be looking at the behavior of the ions what is happening the movement of ions that's causing these things so we're going to be looking at that don't go anywhere after this break you're welcome back so now look at what happens ionic basis of these things first point you need to note is the fact that what really differentiates excitable tissues from non-excitable tissues you know structure is always what determines function so the fact that you have some cells nerve cells and so on that are excitable some are not excitable there is something there there's a structure that these ones have that others don't have and what is that you no know, we talked about leak channels when we're talking about the rest of memory there's another type of channel located in excitable tissues alone and that is what is called voltage gated channels you have the voltage gated channels for sodium you have the voltage gated channels for potassium everything about actual membrane potentials they always they always have to do with the focus is on sodium and potassium so after we've dealt with leak channels how they generate that polarization initially now we're talking about the fact that they also have voltage gated channels sodium voltage gated channels potassium voltage gated channels. what do we mean by all this voltage we are talking about voltage gated voltage gated channels a voltage gated channel is a channel it's a gate no it has a gate it can close it can open 
It's a channel that closes and opens in response to potential differences. Do you understand that? So what stimulates their opening or closing? It's according to the charge. The, not just the charge, but the difference in charge between the two sides. All right? So that is what it stimulated electrically, which depends on the amount of difference, the potential difference, either more positive or more negative. That is what stimulates them. Okay? So now we are going to now see how it plays out in these three stages, ionic basis. Now, when there's a stimulus, could be any kind of thing. For example, you being able to hear me talk, talk, my voice, is a stimulus, it's an external stimulus, sound energy. Your sound energy is converted into electrical energy and sent through your nerves, vestibular cochlear nerves, to the brain, and then it interprets and you hear sound. That's, that's a, it converts it. There is an ionic basis. It opens, channels are open and all, all, all these things. That's why you are learning this very basic thing about her. You, I, someone touches you like this. You are able to feel it because their nerves have carried that stimulus. Mechanical displacement of this thing it has converted mechanical energy into electrical energy and sense it. That's how these things work. Okay, So stimulus is energy. A change. So when a stimulus is applied to the nerve, sometimes that stimulus is not strong enough. So at that moment, what happens is that there is some depolarization because you have leak channels, which normally there leak channels when there when there is some stimulation. It opens more sodium leak channels. Listen very carefully. Sodium leak channels are opened more. And what happens? Sodium rushes in because sodium is much outside the cell. So it has a tendency to always want to go in. Okay, so more sodium is going in. And what is sodium? It's a positive ion. So it's going in. It is now making the membrane potential less negative. It is causing some depolarization. Do you understand that? Some depolarization. But there is something called a threshold. Threshold. What do we mean by threshold? Threshold is actually talking about the fact that it gets to a level of depolarization where the voltage gated sodium channel hmm, is now activated and it now becomes a very powerful positive feedback mechanism. Look at what happens. Now, when the stimulus is so small, it's just raising it up here like this, going up and down and so on. It's called graded potential. The stimulus is a little big. It will make it more positive, smaller, less positive, and so on and so forth. It's just hovering around there. But when it gets to a point, which is usually, that threshold is usually 15 more positive 15 millivolts more positive than the resting membrane potential look at what's happening here minus 70 look at minus 55 so this point is the threshold for this particular nerve they differ in different kinds of nerves and so on so at this point once it's able to get to be depolarized to this minus 55 that particular nerve there's now a lot of opening of voltage gated sodium channels and what happens a lot more sodium will now rush into the cell 
So most of them rushing through this voltage gated channel will cause further depolarization. Do you understand? Initially, it was the leak channels that was causing the depolarization. Now it now go gets to a point where it is depolarized enough to open this voltage now adds to more depolarization and more depolarization opens even more voltage gated sodium channel so more sodium rushes in and more is open so you see the positive feedback that is what happens here well, that's why it shoots up very rapidly you see it so this point here where it shoots up like this is called overshoot So it shoots up to a point that it now reaches zero, equalizes, and now starts becoming even positive. Do you see it now? It starts becoming positive. But what happens when it, once it gets to this point? Once it gets to this point, it starts becoming positive up to this point. The voltage-gated channels of sodium become inactive and they close. So sodium stops rushing in. Do you understand that? Sodium stops rushing in. Then what now happens? Repolarization now begins to take place. But look at what happens. The next thing is that the voltage-gated channels of potassium now become active. So you see the, the play. This one is the sodium voltage-gated channels are becoming inactive when it gets when it shoots up high this level the opposite happens to potassium voltage gated channels that's when they now open and what happens to potassium what's the direction of movement okay potassium moves from inside out do you understand so more positive is leaving which is now restoring it back to negativity do you understand? So it's that's what causes this repolarization, the efflux of potassium. So let us write it down here. Depolarization is as a result of what? Sodium influx. Why repolarization is as a result of potassium. Let me just write it K. Potassium efflux. Do you understand that? That is it. Potassium is living through the voltage gated channels. Do you understand? But look at now. Hyper. What is now making it instead of just going back to the red? It's now even going even more negative. This is what happens. Generally speaking, voltage gated channels of sodium are very fast. They open and close fast. But potassium, the voltage-gated channel of potassium, is slow. Because of its slowness, that's why this thing even shoots so much like this. Okay? It doesn't get so active on time to prevent it from going too far. That's what causes the overshoot, the slowness. And the same thing too, when it now gets to this point, minus 70 these voltage gated channels become enough they start closing but they are closing very slow so before it will finish closing so much more potassium would have left to now make it more negative than it was before do you understand so there's a brief period of more negativity than the resting it goes to maybe minus 80 and so on because of the slowness in the voltage gated of potassium from closing back. So you see the interplay. That's what happens. So hyperpolarization is as a result of slow closure of potassium voltage gated channels. That is what causes the hyperpolarization. But what happens is that the sodium potassium ATPase 
okay restores everything back the action of that restores everything back like through its action of pushing out sodium and pushing in potassium into the cell back okay you know the hyperpolarization is like close so slow closure potassium leaves going out but that this that potassium atp brings back more potassium it pumps potassium into the cell and pumps out sodium out of the cell so it now restores it you see it now going up it now it now becomes normal resting do you understand it now so this is what what happens in action potential okay depolarization making it more positive there's still a lot to talk about in action potential a lot of the characteristics all or non law and so on and so forth refractory period these are things we need to settle down and talk so for now this is a very good start action potential just meditate upon it, the three stages and what causes it's very easy to understand as i've explained it right don't complicate your your understanding with so many other things simple easy sodium influx potassium influx and excitable tissues they are special because of the possession of voltage gated channels of sodium and of potassium okay all right so i'm going to see you in the next video